Today, you'll learn how to extract a transparent object from the background using the background removal tool in Photoshop. Now, it's one thing to do this with a plain, simple background that's only one color, but you'll also learn how to extract transparent objects from more difficult backgrounds like this one, where there are multiple colors and textures. Once you learn these techniques today, you'll be able to extract any transparent object from even the most difficult backgrounds. <laughs> it's important to think of the background eraser tool as being less of a background eraser and more of a color eraser because Photoshop has no way of really knowing what's a background and what isn't, but it can easily identify colors. I'm going to select the background eraser tool and you'll notice the cursor changes. It's got a crosshair in the middle and then it, just like any other brush, you can resize it with the left and right bracket keys or you can resize it up here. The way that this tool works is any color that's directly underneath the crosshairs will be selected. And then whatever's within that surrounding circle is the pixels that will be deleted. So for example, if I click on the red and making sure that the red is underneath my crosshairs, only the red color and whatever's within that circle will be deleted. If I overlap into the yellow or into the blue, those won't be deleted because they're not red. My original selection was red. That's what was under the crosshair. So that's the only color that will be deleted. Now I'm gonna add a fourth color and it's gonna be very similar to this blue. I'll just make it a little bit lighter. So just with my paintbrush, we'll get him in there. And then once again, on the background eraser tool, notice that I've got the tolerance now set at 100%. What that means is this background eraser is gonna be 100% tolerant of including any color that is somewhat similar to this blue. So again, I'm gonna click only on the dark blue, but notice how when I come over the other blue, it's just gonna go ahead and take 100% of that away as well. Now this red, is too different, those pixels don't get deleted. Now, if I were to turn my tolerance all the way down to say zero, 1%, then that means the tool will be very not tolerant of anything that isn't this exact blue or very close to it. So again, if I click on it, it's not even tolerant, you can think of it that way, of this similar blue. And of course, it's not going to include any of the other colors. A good rule of thumb is to set your tolerance right around 50% and then just make adjustments from there. So again, I'm going to click only on the darker blue and then notice how it does delete probably about 50% of the pixels from this other blue. And that is a good tool to have, especially when you're working with transparent objects where you want it to look like there's still kind of an object there, but you can just see through it. So it makes sense that an image like this would be pretty simple to extract from the background because you've only got one single color in the background. I've got my settings at sampling once and discontiguous. We'll talk about those more later. So all I need to do is set my crosshairs over top of the black and then anything that is black will be erased from the image. My tolerance was at 75%. I probably could have increased that but pretty easy and now we've got a fully transparent image but what about a background like this that's more detailed you may think it's impossible but it's really pretty simple first off let's talk about this setting contiguous means touching so Photoshop can erase pixels only in areas that are physically touching the pixel under the midpoint or crosshair of the cursor in other words it can't jump across other colors or the glass or anything else to erase pixels that aren't touching so I'm going to click on this black to select. I've got my tolerance set at 50%. Continue to hold down your mouse or pen. Don't let go. The black pixels within the outer circle are being deleted at about 50%, but since they're the exact same black as my original selection, 100% of the pixels will get deleted, but only after they're directly touching the pixels under the crosshair. So here's how that looks. This setting can be useful when you want to make very careful detailed selections and you want to have a lot of control. Discontiguous is just the opposite, not touching. So again, I'm going to select the black colors and now any black pixels, whether they're touching or not, are going to be deleted. As long as they're within that outer circle, all of the black pixels will be deleted. And of course, it's based on whatever tolerance I have set. Now we're ready to get to work. The first thing I wanna do is put the glass on its own layer. So I'm gonna use select subject, 
and control J to put it on its own layer and hide the background. You'll want to make sure you get a nice neat selection, but I'm just not going to take the time to do that for this tutorial. I'll select my background eraser tool. I've got sampling once and discontiguous as my settings. Sampling once just means you've taken your sample and that's it. That's the sample you want to use. You're not going to continue sampling as you move. So again, I'll click on this black to select it, but look what happened. The black in the rim of the glass also got deleted, which I don't want. So I need a little bit more control. To do that, I'm going to switch the shape of my brush to a flatter shape by moving this dial so that I can more easily stay away from the rim. I've also switched my setting to contiguous. That's going to help me have more control as well. Now, when I make a selection with my flatter brush, remember you can treat this like any other brush. It's a lot easier to stay away and have a little bit more control. So I'm just gonna swipe around and get rid of all of the blacks within the glass and continue to change the shape of my brush as I move along the glass so that I'm better able to stay away from those edges. Now here I've got lots of control. My original selection was on black, so as long as I just click on a black and keep moving around the glass, only those blacks will be selected. Again, I'm at a 50% tolerance, and that seems to be working perfectly here. So just carefully going around and moving over the entire glass. Every time I come over a black or anything close to a black with that 50% tolerance, it gets deleted. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing with these beige brown colors. I'm gonna select one of the shades of brown and just continuing to hold down my pen or mouse, whichever you're working with, just swiping across the entire glass. And again, at a 50% tolerance, this seems to be working well to get rid of only those lighter beiges. Now you'll notice, obviously we've still got the texture from the squares and you'll see in a minute, that's just a darker color. So we'll just go back and select those darker colors to get rid of those. See here, I've selected one of the edges of the squares and I'm okay with some of this texture still showing up or some of the color still showing up because again this is a glass it's going to have edges and little pieces of you know matter that you can kind of see that there is something there it can also give the illusion of light reflecting onto the glass from the environment as you'll see in a little bit right now i'm going to create a solid color adjustment layer just to see what this glass is looking like so far on top of a colored background so so far it's looking really good and you can kind of see what i mean about those colors that still remain sort of look like they're being reflected from the environment. I've still got some work to do. I've still got some of the shape of the squares to take away, but here's an idea of what we're looking like so far. So I'm just going to erase a few more pixels and I think we're there. Here we are on an orange background now because I want to show you how to blend this into the background, but first really quickly I'm going to turn my tolerance down to about 12% because I also want a little bit of transparency in the stem of the glass, but only in the beige parts. I want to keep that black there to keep the structure of the glass intact. And now here's how to blend this glass into the orange background. On a new layer with a clipping mask, all I'm gonna do is select the color of the orange and with a large soft brush, paint that color onto the outer edges of the glass very gently. I'm just tapping along the edges and I'm mostly focusing on the mid-tones and darker tones. I'm not really hitting the highlighted areas. So this will give the illusion that that orange color is sort of bleeding through onto the glass. Here's a before and after of what that looks like. Now here's a little trick. Grab your clone stamp tool and with this icon next to the W selected, I'm going to select my right highlight by hitting my Alt key and clone that onto the left. What's happening is it's flipped horizontal so that it matches the angle of the highlight on the left. It's a good idea to get rid of the color cast from the original photo. So in order to do this, I'm just gonna create a hue saturation adjustment layer with a clipping mask. And all I'm doing is turning down the saturation. And that's it. That's how you extract a transparent object from a difficult background. And then you can put it on any sort of background you want. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. See you in the next one.